All right, guys, in today's video, we're talking about the upcoming standalone Last of Us multiplayer game as we have a significant update to go over regarding this title. We are also going over another significant update pertaining to the Microsoft Bethesda acquisition as Phil Spencer has finally come out and given us an answer as to whether or not future Bethesda titles will be exclusive to the Xbox platform or if they will continue to release on the PlayStation platform. So before we dive into it, if you could do me a favor and hit the like button to help the video out and show your support, I'd really appreciate that. And make sure you leave a comment down below, leaving your thoughts on what we go over here today. But starting here with the Last of Us multiplayer title, it says here Naughty Dog looks to be continuing on with the development of the Last of Us Part 2's multiplayer mode, as the developer is now hiring for an economy designer for a multiplayer experience. The job posting states that the developer is looking for someone who can implement and tune the game economy and player progression systems. This team would then collaborate with other departments to ensure aspects mesh with the game as a whole. It also seems like the faction's multiplayer will be positioned as a much deeper experience that will be supported for months and years to come, as the position talks about collaborating with a live ops team, which would presumably be in charge of content drops, several events, or seasonal events, etc. So while this job application doesn't really provide much in the way of new information about the faction's multiplayer for the game, it shows that development is continuing on and it seems like the majority of the gameplay experience is likely finished. And the goal is to now balance the experience's economy progression and gameplay to ensure it's all fair and works as intended when the mode releases. Now, I do want to acknowledge something here and that is the fact that this article keeps referring to this as a mode. I want to make it clear that the chances of this just being a mode, very, very low. The chances of this being a full-blown standalone Last of Us game, very high. I think it's pretty clear by this point that whatever it is Naughty Dog is working on, it is going to be pretty huge. In fact, to me, it comes off as Sony's first real attempt at a true live service game. I'm talking like a juggernaut game that's going to have potentially millions of people playing it month over month, something that they're going to keep at the forefront of the PlayStation ecosystem and constantly update, constantly market, and constantly try to bring in more players. That's my assumption with this. The Last of Us is a very well-known IP. It's a very well-established IP at this point, and it's a popular IP on top of all that. And I think that there are plenty of PlayStation fans who are going to be very excited when they finally announce this. And based off of this job listing, it really does sound like they are going all out for this title. They're hiring an economy designer to really flesh out the progression systems and make sure that they are very deep, very rewarding, hopefully very balanced. And a big sign that this is going to be a live service title is the fact that they are hiring specifically for this position because when it comes to live service titles, this is one of the more important aspects of them. Obviously, the gameplay is the most important, but when it comes to the idea of a Last of Us Part 2 multiplayer, or not Part 2, but just a Last of Us multiplayer title, I think they're going to nail the gameplay. The gameplay of The Last of Us is amazing. The game's going to look great, and it's, I think, going to really excite a lot of people. But the fact that they're hiring for this specifically... This tells me that this is going to be a big push, the first big push potentially of a true AAA live service title underneath Sony. And I know that not everybody wants to hear that, but we have to understand that this is certainly something Sony as a business wants to pursue. Um, there are many game publishers out there who have very, very successful and very high quality games as a service titles, right? That we see kind of always talked about, always at the forefront, and more importantly for these businesses, always making a lot of money. So yes, there will be microtransactions. They'll most likely be cosmetic only. And this is going to be a pretty big deal when it's revealed. And, and if you're somebody who's anticipating this to be some kind of free update, like we saw with Ghost of Tsushima Legends, I absolutely would not anticipate that. This is going to be a full-blown game. It's going to be marketed as one. It's going to be treated as one. The only real question I have at this point is, well, first, when are we going to get our first trailer? When are we going to get our first actual glimpse of this? And second, is it going to be a game that we have to buy for like 40 bucks, maybe more, maybe less, or is it going to be a free-to-play experience? I think the chances of it being free-to-play are relatively high. 
I do also want to warn everybody, if you're somebody who really doesn't like the idea of Sony putting their games on PC, there's a very high chance that this multiplayer title will also release on PC. I just want to make that clear. I know that to a lot of people, it sounds crazy because it's like, oh, Naughty Dog putting their games on PC, The Last of Us IP on PC. Just brace yourself, expect anything. Uh, don't assume that you know for sure what Sony's going to do. I'm just saying that when it comes to multiplayer titles specifically, you know, they're looking to get the most amount of people on board as they can, especially if it's a game as a service. So just be prepared for that. Uh, but either way, I am very excited to learn about this. I can't wait to see it. I'm going to assume that we will hear more about this and see it in a more official capacity, probably sometime in June when Sony has their uh, big mid-year event. So yeah, let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. But we're going to move on and talk about the Microsoft Bethesda acquisition because there were some significant things that were revealed today. So it says when the Microsoft Bethesda acquisition was announced last year, it began a wave of speculation about the Xbox company bolstering its first party lineup and exclusives, which games would be kept for Microsoft's own portfolio, which would be allowed to flourish as multi-platform titles. Given the unfinished nature of the deal at the time, neither Microsoft nor Bethesda would say much about plans for the future. But now that Microsoft's purchase of ZeniMax and all of its studios are finalized, but that, you know, we're talking about Bethesda Game Studios, ID Software, ZeniMax Online Studios, Arcane Machine Games, Tango Gameworks, Alpha Dog, and Roundhouse Studios. Uh, you know, this is a complete thing now. It's finalized. We want to know, you know, what's going on. And Phil Spencer apparently answered this question today. So reiterating previous commitments to make sure Bethesda games are at least better or best on Xbox platforms and services, Microsoft said gamers should know that Xbox consoles, PC, and Game Pass will be the best place to experience new Bethesda games, including some new titles in the future that will be exclusive to Xbox and PC players. The post from Phil Spencer avoids laying out any additional specifics for the time being, just saying that they'll have more to share later this year. It seems their plans will heavily focus on Xbox Game Pass, however. Now, so, you know, this is kind of still a vague answer and you can really take it any way. Um, but one thing that is made clear is that at least some future Bethesda titles will be exclusive to the Xbox ecosystem. Now, are these going to be like the big titles such as the next Elder Scrolls, Fallout, or Doom? Or are these going to be like more along the lines of anytime they make a new IP, maybe like Starfield or any of their other studios that make a new IP, are they going to be exclusive to Xbox? And so people won't be upset because they won't feel like they're having these games that they've grown used to playing on their preferred platform ripped away from them. It's hard to say. That is not something that Phil Spencer made uh, clear here, which I think is unfortunate because I think a lot of people really do just want to know. I, I think it would be best for us to know, at least for people who are really invested in Bethesda games or, you know, care about these future titles. Like, hey, you know, can, can I expect to play the next Elder Scrolls on my PlayStation? If not, please let me know so I can know whether or not I'm going to be playing it on PC or Xbox. Hopefully we'll get like a specific answer sometime this year. But right now, this is what we're going to have to settle with. And uh, it is worth noting that there were quite a few Xbox fans who really did believe that Microsoft was going to make all Bethesda games exclusive. But at this point, I think it's clear that that's not going to happen. There are some people who believe that this is Phil Spencer kind of talking about games like Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo, as well as uh, The Elder Scrolls Online. I definitely don't think that's what he's talking about here. It could be, but that would seem a little bit misleading. He says some future games will be exclusive. So clearly games that are going to come out later, but it really does kind of sound like any game that started development on PlayStation as well as Xbox will come to PlayStation. But that's just my assumption. We still have to kind of wait to see. So if I were you, I would probably just kind of assume that any game is going to be exclusive uh, until we know it's not for sure just to avoid any potential disappointment i mean even though this is what phil's saying i don't know i do feel like if games like the elder scrolls 6 or fallout 5 or whatever is going to come later 
I feel like if these games were going to be exclusive, this is something that they would make very clear in an effort to get people to start subscribing to Game Pass right now and go out and buy Xboxes right now. Maybe not. Maybe they want to save it for like a big reveal during an event, but this is what we know right now. And so it's made clear that not every game is going to be exclusive to Xbox. Um, so we're just going to have to wait to find out which ones will be. But that's going to do it for the video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you did find it informative. I will be interested to see what you have to say. So leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Leave the video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share the video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.